Hello, I hope you're doing great. Today we are going to talk about how you can do caching or ca yeah, caching in your .NET applications. This works for .NET Core, .NET 5, .NET 6, and will probably keep working on the future versions of .NET. Okay, so let's start. So you see that I have this small application and this is basically the default template for a Blazor web assembly application running with .NET Core hosted API running on .NET 5 and using Visual Studio 2019. I did some slight modifications to add memory cache for this example. So what you will see is that in this application, if I fetch data, the first request to the data will take a while, right? Because I purposely added some code to cause some delay the first time the data is being retrieved. Actually, if you see, if I go back to the other pages and go back to the fetch data page, the data returns immediately. Uh, even if I load this full load, the data will return pretty much immediately, right? So it's only the first time that it is um, that it is um, having a big delay. Except now, right? You see that now it's actually uh, taking long again and now it is it is not right so why is that right that is because I caused the delay and I also configured an expiration time an absolute expiration time so basically what I did is I set the expiration time for that entry to be 30 seconds so the cache object will only live for 30 seconds before it has to be requested again. So how do we do that? Let's go to Visual Studio and we will see. Wait a second. So the first thing that you need to do is in your Visual Studio, you will need to go to your startup.cs and on the configure services you need to add this line services dot add memory cache this will enable a non distribute cache so you will be able to use memory cache in your application the other thing that you need to do is wherever you need to use the memory cache you will add in your constructor and I memory cache variable, right? Using dependency injection, and then you will assign it to a local variable to be able to use it in all of your methods in this in this controller in this case. Right. You see that I also split this call into a separate method, and this is where I cause the five second seconds delay on purpose right so every single time that this method is being invoked it will wait five seconds however as you saw in the when i was running the application in the browser this wait for five seconds took place only two times the first time i invoke the pets data page and again, 30 seconds after I invoke the fetch data page the first time, right? This is because in the get method, I am using the memory cache object. And you see what I am doing is I am invoking this get or create a sync function and I will I am storing the result of that variable 
into this the result of this function or method into this variable and I am returning the value of this variable this get or create a sync basically what it does is it will look the memory cache for an object that has this key right if there is an object that has this key it will it will return an object into this variable right if there is no object with this key or if it has already expired it will execute all of this right so what it will do is if there is no object with this key it will configure the entry in this case I added to expire 30 seconds after it has been added and then you return the actual data so you'll see that I am returning the result of this method in this case right so again if the memory object has an object with this with this key it will return it immediately otherwise it will execute the code in here in the function and it will store the result of this into this object with this key and then it will pass it to re the result variable right so that is why the code was uh, waiting five seconds only the first time and 30 seconds after it had been added right remember you add the add memory cache line in your in your configure services you do services dot add memory cache wherever you need to use the i memory cache you will get it on your constructor you will assign it to our local variable right and then you will use the get or create a sync method to configure how you want your cache entry to behave to return the data and you will assign the return of the get or create a sync function method to this uh, to the variable that you want to use for the rest of your code right so this is a small example on how you can use memory cache in one of your applications right now this works with uh, applications where your application is a single application right if you want to have shared cache over multiple applications or in a web farm you may need to use what is called distributed cache right and we will not talk we will not talk about that in this video but we will uh, talk more about it in one of the future videos basically the distribute distributed cache uses a server that will host your data and your applications will consume the data from that server uh, and you will use cache and you can use like SQL server SQL server cache redis cache and I think you can even use custom cache servers right um, but yeah we will talk about that in a future video i hope this video has been useful thank you very much for watching please remember subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell and invite more people to subscribe so we can keep making more free videos for you also please remember visit the links in the video description and have a great day let us know what you will want about trainings for Azure.NET and Unity 3D. Thank you very much.